Hello everyone, my name is Faisal. This presentation is part one of three of creating a read type stored procedure. Today I'll be showing you how to create a read type stored procedure in the sample Northwinds database using SQL Server Management Studio for SQL Server 2014. Stored procedures offer a lot of functionality for the database developer and to the business users of the database. I'll be focusing on the most basic use case of stored procedure, which is using it as a reusable parameterized query. Now with your query, you have CART functionality, i.e. you can create, read, update, and delete records in your database. The same CRUD functionality is available by extension in a stored procedure, as it is essentially a reusable query. In this presentation, we will focus on creating a stored procedure that reads or returns a view from the database based on a parameter. A parameter in a stored procedure is an input that the user provides. This input, in our case of returning a view, is used by the underlying query to filter the view on. Say I have a view that lists grocery item and prices. I could create a parameter to filter and query the view only on seafood items and grocery items. This will become clearer in the presentation. Let me show you the outline of the presentation. Part 1. I will use an existing view to create a read type stored procedure to query the database with a parameter and return a filtered view. Part 2. I will show you how to pass null value to the parameter of the stored procedure and return an unfiltered view. Part 3. I will show you how to create a multiple parameters for the stored procedure to be used as inputs and filters to query the database view. Moving on with Part 1. Let's create our first read type or view returning stored procedure in Northwind database. Northwind is a fictitious company which uh, imports and exports uh, specialty foods from all around the world. I've shown you how to install the Northwind database in SQL Server 2014 in a previous presentation. Let's open our management studio and browse to the Northwind database. Click on the plus sign and expand the database. Since we will be returning a view from our stored procedure, let's start with a view. Browse to Views and Expand. Here you will see multiple views that were pre-built in the database. Right-click on Sales by Category, View, and click Design. I already have this view opened. A quick summary of this view. This view is providing business users with a summary of the sales amount for the calendar year 1997 to from January to December by grouping on products and categories. Let's say our business user wanted to see the sales amount for only one product category, say seafood. We could certainly create the view for them, but uh, this requirement could keep changing from seafood today to beverages tomorrow. We could also provide access to the query to our business users to change the filter criteria to fit their needs, but then you have given them read access at the table level on the database, which you wouldn't want to do for security reasons. Your business user would also have to understand the database model to work with the query effectively. Well, creating a stored procedure manages all of this for us. It uh, handles parameters to be changed by users at speed of thought. It gives uh, business users permission to run the stored procedure without giving them permissions to underlying tables. And also, unlike query, it creates a layer of abstraction of the database. So the user does not have to know the underlying database architecture. They would be focused only on the parameter and the result. Back to our view. Let's uh, run this view first. We get uh, 77 records back. Now filter the view on the category of seafood. The query designer auto-corrected by adding nchar to my filter. It recognized a column definition. Let me show you. Let's open the categories table. Expand it. 
expand columns there you see the category name as nvar char which is where the n in the query came from by the designer while we are here right click on the table and then click on select top 1000 rows to get a view of all the category names back to our view run this view We get 12 records that match the seafood category. I'll put another filter on the product sales, say greater than zero. I'll explain why later, but for now, as it is greater than zero, it has no bearing as a filter. Let's execute it to show you. Same result as before, 12 records. Let's copy the SQL code that was automatically generated for us by the designer. And open a new query and paste the code in here. To convert this query to a parameterized stored procedure, type create procedure Give it a name, say by sales by category read. Let's pass a parameter to the stored procedure. To create one, use the at sign followed by the name. So let's call it category name. and specify the data type for this parameter. Since I'm creating this parameter to be used on the category name field, so let's find the column definition of this in the categories table. nvarchar15. And type as in the next line. Let's go to the SQL code and find where we have the filter seafood in there. Let's take that out and replace it with at category name. That is all there is to the syntax of converting a SQL query to a parameterized stored procedure that returns a view. Write create procedure, give it a name, go to the next line, specify a parameter with add sign and its type, then type as afterwards in the new line and replace the filter in the SQL with the parameter. To save this stored procedure, we will press execute. Before I do that, let's browse to programmability. This is where stored procedures are saved. Expand it and expand stored procedure. Our procedure is not there yet. Let's click on execute. The SQL code we wrote for the stored procedure by executing it commits the stored procedure to the database. Right click on stored procedures and click refresh. We see sales by category read. Let's run it by clicking on it and then pressing execute store procedure. We are presented with a dialog for entering a parameter. Enter seafood and press OK. We get the same results as the view that we have filtered on seafood. 12 records here and 12 records there. Before I wrap up this session, let me show you how to run a stored procedure programmatically. Open a new query and type execute sales by category read at category name 
that's equal to seafood and press the red exclamation mark which is for execute the SQL and we get a result of 12 records. I hope this uh, helps in getting you started in building read type of parameterized stored procedures. Uh, in part two, I will show you how to return the entire unfiltered view by passing a null value to the parameter and enhance the functionality for stored procedure by doing both filtered on parameter and unfiltered views of the database. Thank you.